Okay, yeah, I think I'm... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is our last day today, and then we'll be back. Uh, we're off for two weeks, and then we'll be back uh, 3rd of January. So I just want to wish everybody a very happy Christmas and a wonderful New Year 2022, which is ahead of us. Uh, it's going to be a roaring year. <laughs> But if we keep our eyes on the Lord, there are two things happening at the same time, so it won't be too bad. Um, I'm just having a quick look and see who we've got on. That's okay, Joan. The sound is working now. Um, let me just see that you've got... Yeah, that's it. Okay, we're on now. I didn't switch the uh, mixer on. <laughs> this has been a very unusual two days. Um i just been getting downloads that are just mind-boggling, mind-boggling. And I read somewhere, which I thought, you know, we're talking about the numbers and the Hebrew stuff. And um, I, I, I've got to be honest, I don't like doing predictive stuff. Um, I, I don't know, you can get so wrapped up in it that uh, you lose track uh, you you take your eyes off the Lord and you get your eyes on the actual predictions. Uh, but our main aim is to get our, keep our eyes on the Lord. Our main aim is to strengthen one another so that, uh, you know, it's what Jesus said to his disciples. You know, I remember when he was going away and he said, I've told you these things, that you won't be troubled when it happens. Um, and... It, it's the same with numbers, really, you know, using numerics and, um, you know, the living letters. Uh, I'll, I'll just read what somebody, uh, what a, a, a scholar said. How can we stay balanced when it comes to studying numbers? How can we avoid falling into the one ditch of ignoring numbers and the other ditch of being more engrossed with numbers? than the creator of numbers. I, I hope that's clear. I hope I, I, I've made that clear. Uh, I love numbers. I, 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 lo I love the numbers. I love the living letters. But I don't want to be focused so much on the numbers that I miss the living God. Do you understand? So he says, here is the balance. The study of numbers is useful so long as it centers on the God of the Bible, the one who made the numbers and assigned to them meaning. But when numerology centers on man and his attempts uh, to make predictions about himself, uh, then it becomes like astrology, a perversion of something good God made. So, uh, again, it's this whole thing, isn't it, what we're talking about, counterfeit and perversion of the truth. It, you know, a perversion of the truth or a counterfeit as an element of truth about it, and that's what attracts people. But uh, let me read that again. Here is the balance. The study of numbers is useful so long as it centers on the God of the Bible. Uh, the one who made the numbers and assigned to them meaning so that doesn't mean that there's no truth in what we're teaching about biblical numbers but when numerology centers on man and his attempts to make predictions about himself then it becomes like astrology a perversion of something good god made god made the stars to reflect his glory and tell the story of his son. Do you remember on, on the birth of Jesus that uh, the wise men saw a star, they followed the star? Uh, God made the stars to reflect his glory and tell the story of his son, not which lottery, <laughs> not which lottery ticket to buy. Um, and then I thought this just summed it up. Uh, studying the stars is astronomy. But following the stars is astrology, two different things. One, you worship, you can worship 
You can worship a doctrine. You can worship the doctrine of grace. Uh, you, you know, you can be so wrapped up in it but not enter into it. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Um, studying numbers is biblical numerology, but following numbers is idolatry. So I just thought I'd just put that, uh, put that out there just to bring the balance in there and to bring the correction case. And, and, you know, something I'm very, very conscious of that we can just get so wrapped up in the numbers, the living letters, and actually miss what they're meant for, that they're meant to open up the scriptures to us. Uh, they're meant to, to give us understanding, to take us deeper. But, and I love that. I love that about the numbers. But I, w I was looking at today's reading, and today's reading is found in Psalm 119, verse 88. And we've said it before that Psalm 119 is divided into 22, as one Bible puts it, 22 stanzas, 22 beats. There again is the numbers. Um, <clears throat> and... We're looking at verse 88, which is the letter. And each eight verses begin with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And we're looking at the letter, uh, we're looking at the verse uh, 88, which is uh, the, al the Hebrew alphabet, the 11th letter, which is the, uh, its code is 20. Its code is 20. And we've been talking about, I mean, we didn't plan this, but I just, not, I just noticed it just before we came on air. That's why I was two minutes late. I got so engrossed in this. But, you know, we've been talking about the Roaring Twenties and the last two days we've gone off chart a little bit. When I say off chart, we've not had a reading. Um, you, you know, especially yesterday, I don't think we did the read. Did we do the reading in the morning? I can't remember, but we didn't do it in the evening. We just got, there was so much download to share. Um, and strangely enough, I was reading Revelation and uh, it talks about the seven headed, uh, talks about the dragon giving, you know, giving power to the seven headed beast, which incidentally each head had a crown on. So I, I, what I'm trying to say is, I'm just giving you that balance there, that um, I'm not just talking meaningless words, what they call hocus pocus, as the Oxford Dictionary puts it, um, meaningless talk or activity typically designed to trick someone or conceal the truth of a situation. That's what hocus pocus means. This is not hocus pocus. This is God's uh, design. And isn't it strange that in our generation, DNA has come to the forefront and created a lot of stuff that has been, in a sense, it's corrected a lot of stuff, especially in the <clears throat> when it comes to the crime areas where crimes have been committed and have been covered for so long and years later even they can they can um, solve a crime that they couldn't solve years ago hidden things mysteries that's what we call mysteries things that they couldn't get to grasp or understand and now we are in that generation where god is revealing mysteries to us but we're also in that generation where there's a shaking going on and the very foundations and structures of religious systems are falling. They're falling. And uh, we are not, it's not to say that we're just in it to be, you know, to be anti-religion, anti-this, because um, many of us were raised in the system and we got a lot of good things out of the system. But I, I do believe that the Lord is uh, doing something outside. And, and we've heard this phrase a lot in the last decade. He's doing something outside of the walls of what we call church. 
And um, I just thought yesterday was very, very special. Um, but I don't want us to just get wrapped up in the signs. You understand what I mean? I want us to understand that the Lord is revealing this to us so that, number one, we don't need to be afraid. And in this morning's, you know, as I was studying this morning's word, let me just show you something. Um, let me just see if I can uh, just bring this up and show you. Um, it's not so much the notes on it, but there were a couple of things that were happening, uh, and I'll take you to it in a minute. I just want to just go a little bit deeper on this. Um, I came into the prophetic... Um, didn't realize I came into the prophetic, actually. Do you know what I mean? I didn't call myself a prophet. Um, I still don't call myself a prophet, but what happened in 97? Well, in 94 was, you know, the move in Toronto. And then in 97, I took this, uh, I was part of this conference called Another Drink. And it was in 97 that the whole thing exploded for me in, you know, in ministry, um, Bob Jones had prophesied to me, uh, and it was one of those prophecies that were, it wasn't in a meeting, we were in a leaders meeting, and we were walking back from the leaders meeting, down the hall, hallway, and he said to me, John, God is unwrapping revelatory gifts in you. Gifts that have been lying in you that you didn't realize were there. And I I, I realized something this morning. Um, it took me back to 97. In 97, you see people again, you know, we're talking about getting wrapped up in the, um, what's the word? Uh, you can be so focused on the manifestation that you miss the meaning, if that makes sense. Um I got hit with this joy and I got hit with this intoxication which caused me to get outside of myself and I began for the very first time to use symbolic language. Um, you say, well, what do you mean by symbolic language? Well, I couldn't speak. I could not string words together and so I used whatever was in my hand or, you know, bottle of water or I had these long uh, yard sticks which were measuring sticks and the Lord showed me something this morning about that um, he unwrapped something in me this morning uh, he unwrapped something in me yesterday that just exploded and uh, I just had to share it you know and I don't like sharing predictive stuff I've told you I don't like sharing predictive stuff but I do believe that it's, it's right on in what Margie Hogg had been sharing a few weeks ago about the Roaring Twenties, that we are in 2021 now, coming into 2022. And uh, what's very, very interesting about the 22 is it's a, it's a double second letter uh, debate, this diversity, this division, uh, this creative letter, but at the same time, two things happening at, at the same time, two opposites. I think Barbara Pugh called it, uh, <laughs> trying to get my tongue around these long words, I can't pronounce it, I can't pronounce it, but two things opposite happening at the same time. And especially when you get, say like 22 now, 2022, two, two baits together. Um, that is an intensity. In other words, it's going to intensify in 2022. What we're experiencing in 2021 of these two opposites and Isaiah chapter 60, great darkness covering the globe. Um, it's going to increase in 2022 and that's why i think the lord is sharing these things with us to encourage us not to be afraid not to fear and as we talked about that levivian spirit being released you know with the seven heads 
the fact is this, that in the scriptures it says that God created that spirit and he is the only one that can control it. Man cannot control this spirit. It's got seven heads. Man cannot control it. But God can control it. And we are the echo of his heart. We are centered in him. Now, um, uh, somebody mentioned about the blood, you know, and about the skull being broken. Uh, it's important that we understand the power of the blood. Again, that we don't get, we don't worship the doctrine of the power of the blood, but that we understand the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and we understand how to apply it. Now, Andrew Murray does a very good book called um, The Power of the Blood, and he goes through and he gives you how in Scripture that you cannot approach God without the shedding of blood. And he, he, he takes you right through it, um, how uh, Cain and Abel, the reason Cain's offering wasn't received was because he brought, he brought the fruit of the field and Abel brought the fruit of his flock. In other words, Abel shed blood and was accepted. Cain brought the seed and the, and the fruit of the harvest and it wasn't accepted. So when we understand the power of the blood and we understand how to apply it, like in Exodus chapter 12, when it says that the angel of death was going over the land, the angel of death was going to be released over the land. And incidentally, it was the 10th plague, the 10th, the number 10, that what we call a tie, what we call that letter yard, that uh, smallest letter suspended between heaven and earth. Um, was when they came out of that pack, when they when they were ready to come out because Pharaoh was was really hardening his heart and didn't want to release them, they were told on the last plague, on the tenth plague, and this is where I say this again because there's so much argument over tithe, you know, do a tithe, don't a tithe. When you understand the revelation of the tithe, in other words. You can be tithing legalistically and it won't do you any good. But when you understand the revelation of that number 10 and the release of that number 10 and what it does, you know, the first fruits, when you understand the first fruits and the reason why so many Christians are in poverty is because they're robbing God. Now, you may say, well, John, you're preaching tithing. No, I'm not. I'm preaching a revelation of the living letter of that yard. Okay, I'm getting off the subject, but let me come back to, back to this. They were told to put the blood over the lintel and the, and the post, which is that number eight, which is that ket, the threshold, over the threshold. They were told to put the blood over the threshold. The number eight signifies a crossing over, a coming out of one situation into another. And that's where we are. That's where we are right now. We're not coming into it. We're right there now. We're crossing over. And uh, there's a shaking going on and the angel of death is passing over. And we as Christians need to understand, it was mentioned yesterday, that we don't need to fear this Lebivian spirit because God is the only one that can control that spirit, number one. Number two, we are his children Number three, we are hidden in him. Amen. We are hidden in him. Uh, but use that blood. Be speak that blood by the testimony, by the testimony and the power of the blood, we overcome the enemy. Very, very important that you understand that. In fact, what I'm going to do, and I said it to Jean, even with that shalom that we're talking about, when you understand it in the Hebrew, that it's, um, what is it, fire on the government that is attached to confusion, shalom. Each one of those letters have a picture value and a number value. And I got myself some of those garden, have you seen them, some of those plant pot um, plastic tags that you put in a pot when you plant a seed? so that you know what you planted. Well, I'm going to write the 
the ne uh, I'm going to write the word Shalom on each one of those little white stickers and I'm going to plant them on the boundary of my property round Shalom. Amen. Okay, quickly then, coming back to this. Uh, what uh, Bob Jones said to me about on, on uh, I'm going to unwrap gifts in you. And I think it's the same for people that are listening, that God has put gifts in you and that he wants to unwrap those gifts. Now, the reason they're not unwrapped is because you don't know that they're there. <laughs> you don't, you've not recognized that you've got these giftings in you. But we're going to release that this morning. We're going to release that, Father, in the name of Yeshua right now. I ask that you just release these gifts in your children. Gifts that are still wrapped and that have been lying there for years and, and that people have not realized that they've got them. Like myself, Lord, that you will just release those gifts right now. Unwrap them in them. Now, let me show you something that, coming back to Toronto, um, Forgive me, because I'm just unloading on you. I, I, there is so much download that I can't, I haven't even had time to process everything. But what the Lord was showing me this morning about the uh, the letters and the numbers, having given the, um, what, what do you call that when you give a small print? Uh, oh, there's a little word, uh, disclaimer. <laughs> having given the disclaimer that we don't, uh, our focus Yes, we're looking at the letters. Yes, we're studying the numbers. Yes, we're getting excited about it. But we're not taking our eyes off what the focus or what the reason is for those letters and those numbers is to glorify God, is to lift him up, is to keep our focus on him and is to just, just explode the awe within us that God is a God of design, a creative God, and that he's put his seal and his signs in his creation. So often we use the word signs and wonders for healing and miracles, but it's a lot bigger than that. It's a lot bigger than that. We've just focused on, you know, when we say signs and wonders, we think of somebody getting healed or a miracle happening. It's a lot more than that. And incidentally, what the, the word wine in Hebrew is sign. It's a sign. The first miracle, the word miracle uh, in uh, the Gospels where Jesus went to Cana of Galilee and turned the purification pots of water into wine and that the steward of the wedding said, that you have saved the best wine until the last. Do you understand? Do you understand the sign behind that? That it's in some in some translations it says miracles, but really, it's a sign. And this drunkenness, this outpouring that happened, especially for myself and for others, um, this outpouring of the new wine was a sign and it was filled with such joy and such awe but it offended so many people and so many people could not get their head around it because they were looking at it from a legalistic point of view that the bible said you couldn't drink and they got so wrapped up they got they made it in in the minors and minored in the majors and didn't realize that this was a sign this was a pictorial sign now let me come back to this Toronto thing in 97, just to explain to you. I've always felt, uh, you know, I've always said, well, you know, I, I can't draw. Do you know what I mean? I can't sketch, I can't draw. My son is excellent at it. My um, uh, Debbie's son is excellent at it and is going into ar architecture now. Gifts tend to run down through families. We often do deliverance for people, don't we? We often do the negative and we say, oh, they, you've got that in your bloodline. You've got this in your bloodline. But we very rarely talk about uh, the inheritance, the heritage that's passed down through the bloodline. That is good. And uh, Debbie's son, uh, Jamie, is very gifted, like John Mark, in drawing, sketching. 
and wants to be an architect. Now, that I, I've been, let me just take you to this. Take no notice of the notes, but I, I just want to show you something I've been doing, and it struck me today what the Lord was doing. Um, I've been using graph paper, and then, I don't know whether you've noticed here, I put these dots now, I didn't know why I was doing those dots. I just, oh, that's nice. I, you know, and I did the dots. And, and I thought, yeah, that's nice. And then the Lord spoke to me this morning. And um, he said, uh, do you know why you're doing those dots, John? I said, no, Lord, I don't I don't know why I'm doing those dots. <laughs> I just, they're just nice. And I get it just, when I'm doing the dots, it gives me time to meditate, you know, using the pen and he said, you're connecting the dots. You're connecting the dots. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done that with a picture? And you connect the dots and you get the picture. And then he took me to, you know, this psalm that we're reading, the fact that it's in 22 sections, 22 beats, and the very the very theme of our, of our word today is, you are the echo of my heart, Psalm 119 verse 88, and guess what, guess what the letter is for that section, for that stanza, as they call it, it's the letter car, and guess what the numerical number is for that letter, 20. You, do you think that's a coincidence? And then, you know, as I was beginning to read it, I, I began to realise, uh, you know, that this psalm is it's turning words I, I, what did I put in my notes turning words into geometry geometry is common among you, Jewish interpreters and is approved by the New Testament in Revelation it says look at the number of the beast 666 six, six. isn't that weird uh and then I and then the Lord took me back. He took me back to two incidents. One in Toronto in ninety seven, where I had these rulers, these measuring rods, which were numbers. You know, we're talking about numbers measuring something. And he said, geometry, John, is is technical drawing. Do you know what technical drawing is? It's geometry. And that uh, last word, metry, is to measure numbers. And the difference with technical drawing and sketching is technical drawing is precise. It's what architects do. They draw. I worked in an architect's office as well the first year when I was 16. Worked in an architect's office making coffee. <laughs> uh, I began to realize that, you know, this whole thing's prophetic, that I've had a gift in me because when I was at school, I was good at technical drawing. Not good at sketching, but good at technical drawing. And the Lord said to me, I'm giving you the ability to understand numbers and the pictures so that you can describe to the people, so that you can convey a picture to the people of what precisely I'm doing. Isn't that wonderful? You see, you can't build a house with a sketch but you can build a house with a technical drawing because it's measurements. It's build this wall so long, the room so high, the roof at such a pitch. Isn't that wonderful? I've had that gift and didn't know I had it. <laughs> I can't draw. I can't draw. Lord. Oh, I wish I could. Yes, you can draw. Your drawing's technical. It's with numbers, geometry. Measuring, and I was doing it in Toronto. In one meeting, I, I stuck these yardsticks over the side of the platform, and I said to the people in Toronto, in the middle of a move at its peak, I'm here to measure you. Well, what do you mean you're here to measure us? Well, I, I'm going to see how you react. This is the Lord, you know, use me. I'm going to see how you react to this visual thing. Uh, you know, that's happening 
that was happening through me and was such an offence to the people that even the leaders were split right down the middle and 50% agreed and 50 and they argued with one another over the table. It was of God, it is not God. And that's why I'm very grateful to uh, Melinda Fish because, you know, she put things right. Uh, she put things right in her book and she did a whole section on the drunken man and uh, explained it in such a way that made it, you know, corrected. It was corrective in the sense of, in the first book, they omitted everything that had happened there, you know, through Jean and I and through that anointing because it was such an offence. But in the second book, Melinda Fish apologised to me. But that's not an apology to me, and I'm not saying this just for me. I'm saying this, this is very important, because if you reject something when God comes to you, you know, you're not rejecting me. You're rejecting the anointing that I'm carrying, say, or you're carrying. If, if a person rejects the prophet... He's rejecting the messenger, but he's also rejecting God. He's rejecting, you know, the, the person. Uh, the, he's rejecting the message that God sent. And it's very, very important. I think Daryl Stott wrote a letter to the leaders and said that they need to apologize. Why? Why is that? Why? So that you can be vindicated? No, because you can't brush things under the carpet. You have to admit when you're wrong. And leadership have to admit when they're wrong. You know, I have to admit when I'm wrong. It's the hardest thing to do. The hardest word to say is sorry. The hardest words to say is, I was wrong. <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to say all of that, but this has been a very special two, uh, two days, yesterday and today. This morning, I just got up and looked at this word. And, and I've got to tell you, I'm re I really... My heart breaks more for the leadership because unless we embrace this, and you know what else really, I'm, I'm sharing my heart with you now, but you know what the other thing that really breaks my heart is people that take the new wine and use it so lightly as, you know, we've gone to places where they're having a party, party hats and everything, and they've missed the whole point. They've missed the whole point and got so wrapped up in the manifestation. And, uh, you know, want you to be the party guy, you know, the clown. And it was never meant for that. It was meant, number one, to offend people. Because when God offends you, he breaks the barrier. We talked about that. We talked about it a few mornings ago about God breaking. You know, you getting your breakthrough. God has to break something. I and mean, when in the breaking, you can get offended over it and miss your breakthrough. So, very serious word, isn't it? And I'm out of time. I'm well over time. And again, this is not normal. These are not normal times. Uh, I just have to share that. I have to share it because I think it's very important because of what's coming in the Roaring Twenties. And I'll share a bit more tonight uh, on at five o'clock when we do North America. Um, because I, again, we're out of time. And as Margie says, yeah, we're out of time. We're out of time, church. You don't have time to mess around anymore. You don't have time to play church. Too many people dying. And we've got the answer. Amen. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not even going to do the reading today. <laughs> not even going to pray. Not even going to pray. You know, I use, oh, we're going to pray for this, and then we'll do this, and then we'll do that. And then we'll have a look at the comments, and we'll all talk to one another. You know, no, this is very serious. This is very serious. It's the last day of the year. The last day I'll be broadcasting. And it's very, very serious. And we've got to get your act together. <laughs> you know, come on. Let the rubber hit the road and stop being so airy-fairy. Let that rubber hit the road. Let's get real. Let's get real. I'm tired of fantasy. I'm tired of words, words, words. 
All you want is words, but you're not used to listening to me. Amen. I'll read your comments when I come offline. <laughs> oh, so there we go. There we have it. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and grant you shalom, shalom. <laughs>